Welcome to section 5.6a. All right, gentle people, in this lecture, what we're gonna talk about is kinetic molecular theory. And this is gonna be our first deep dive into a scientific theory. Now, the idea here is that when we have an experiment, we can come up with these laws. And what the laws do are they are a summary of what our data is. However, even though it gives us a law or a summary of data, it doesn't tell us the why. And so this is what theory is trying to tell us. It is trying to tell us the underlying principles of our physical world. Now, just like experiment and developing a law, theory has to be dependent on data and has to be in Congress with the data that we obtain. And I want you guys to remember that a law and theory, these are on the same plane. One isn't better than the other. They are two different things describing our physical world. So what we're trying to do with kinetic molecular theory is we're trying to describe some of the properties of gases, like their diffusion, meaning how, how gases will start out in one area and spread out to fill the entire area uniformly, and to explain some of the gas laws we talked about in a previous lecture. Now, what I want you to understand is, in theory, we are trying to simplify our lives. So we're going to start out talking about ideal gases, but understand an ideal gas doesn't really exist. This is a theoretical gas, and if it was behaving perfectly without some of these attributes that I'm going to throw away, this is how to understand our physical world. So let's go ahead and talk about kinetic molecular theory, or KMT, and we're going to describe some of the tenets behind this theory. The first thing we're going to do in our theory is we're going to assume that the gas particles themselves occupy a negligible amount of volume, or what you guys can say is that the volume of the gas itself is zero. And what I mean by this is if I have a container and it is empty, and I start filling this container with a gas, well, the gas is matter, and matter takes up space. Now, what I'm going to do in KMT is I'm going to assume that the space that the gas actually takes up, like the molecule itself, the proton, neutron, and electron, the volume of space they take up is negligible. So when I say that there is a container that is one liter, the gas has all that available space. It can experience that full one liter, and I don't need to do any subtraction out of this volume. Now, this explains why gases are compressible. If they're not really taking up space, that means I can squish down on them. The second tenet of KMT is that these gases exert no forces upon each other. That means they're not attracted to each other or they're not disattracted to each other. When we talked about solution chemistry, I talked about water. And I said water acts like a bar magnet. Now, if you guys had high school chemistry, what you guys will remember is that water is a polar molecule. And that's why I brought this analogy of a bar magnet. Well, what you will note is a bar magnet can attract another bar magnet. Now, what KMT is saying is that this is going to be discounted. This attraction between polar molecules is not something we're going to consider. We're going to say that these bar magnets are so far apart from each other and they're moving so fast past each other that they exert no forces between each other. So in KMT, I'm going to ignore any forces between two gas particles. They are no longer behaving like bar magnets of any sort. The next tenet of KMT has to do with our description of temperature. What it says is that temperature is actually the measure of the average kinetic energy. Now, you guys might have seen the equation for kinetic energy in your physics class. The kinetic energy equals one-half mv squared. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, in your book, your book is going to use the abbreviation U for velocity. So whenever you see a U, that stands for velocity. M here stands for mass, and Ke, the kinetic energy. So remember what kinetic energy is. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. And if temperature is measuring the average kinetic energy, 
In essence, what temperature is, is a measure of molecular motion. And so this is the official definition of temperature. What you're doing when you stick a thermometer in is you're, you're measuring the average molecular motion of your bulk material. The last tenet of KMT is something that I try to impart on you guys at the beginning of chapter five. And that is that when you think about gas particles, you think of them as randomly moving particles ricocheting against the walls. And when they hit the container of the wall, that is the cause of the pressure that you can actually measure. And so that's what the last tenet says. Gas particles are moving randomly, rapidly, and in continuous motion. And this is the source of the pressure of the gas. So in summary, here are the four tenets of kinetic molecular theory. This is the picture that I want you guys to envision when we talk about kinetic molecular theory. The gas particles are taking up very little space, almost zero. They're very far apart. They're moving incredibly fast. And to measure that movement, we can take the temperature. When they hit the walls, they are going to continue to bounce across. And you guys can think of every collision as an elastic collision meaning they were going to bounce off each other, they will never stick to each other. So once they collide, they'll bounce right off the walls and off each other. Now with all these ideas, let's go ahead and see the implications in our next lecture. I hope that made sense and remember to stay safe, Chem1A.